Hey guys, how's it going? Hope you're doing all good. So I've got a little video today just to demonstrate how to try and take on some dwarf players. If you do this very similar tactic you'll see a ton of dwarf players do, which if we just pause this right here, is kind of you know sit back in the corner of the map with a few different layers of kind of combat troops, normally backed up by some shooting troops. In this case, my opponent has only gone for one bolt thrower, but it's a similar situation you see, you know, time and time again. So in this battle, I'm going to show you what not to do, and then in the, I'm going to be actually a two battle special, and in the second battle, I'll show you now how to actually kind of pick apart a dwarf army like this a little bit better. Let's have a little look at my army here. So in the front line, I have gone for models of great weapons. These are silver chevrons up as well. These guys are great for taking down dwarfs. I mean, they're really cost effective. They do struggle up against miners, just because the blasts and charges can do so much damage. But the great weapons, you know, they really can do a ton of damage against those heavy armored dwarfs. Now on either flank, I do have a couple of Norsk and Warhounds with some Ice Wolves as well. This will just try and get behind the enemy line as dwarves like to you know, tend to put a lot of range and hop on top of Thunderers, Quarrelers and all those different like, nice tasty targets for them. I do have Tunits and Marauder Hunters just for the extra armour piercing. These guys are Throwing Axemen. In the back, we have a unit of Marauder Champions, just a little bit more elite for that added punch in case there's some Iron Breakers anywhere that we need to try and knock out. We also have a Shaman Sorcerer of Metal here. We have a few different spells. I don't tend to actually bring the Sorcerer of Metal. But we've gone for him this time. I mean, it kind of suits right going up against the Dwarves. And it's got trans uh, Transmutation of Lead. And Final Transmutation. And plus, I believe, Plague of Rust there. We've also gone for the Mighty Wolfric the Wanderer up on his horse here. And in the very far back, very, very sneakily, we have two units of Marauder Horsemen with throwing axes. Now they're stuck in this corner. They're going to be trying to sneak their way around. So for my opponent's army today, he does in fact have some Gyrocopter, which is, I like this pick. It's good for a little bit of scouting as well with the Brimstone Gun. And then for his front line, he has gone for some Longbeards, so going fairly elite in the front line. And they're all backed up with Miners with Blasting Charges, of course. So these guys will be great against Marauders. Really nice pick by my opponent here today. Now on either side, he has gone for Longbeards with Great Weapons. And in the back, he has three units of Slayers. Two of them being Giant Slayers. And one unit being the Dragonback Slayers. These guys have a nice slow if they catch you. And so if they manage to hop on top of these Marauder Horsemen, they may be in big trouble. And he has gone for a Bolt Thrower in the back as well. Just do that extra long range damage and try and force me in. Now he's gone for a nice little... Nice little kind of hero blob here. I actually really like the pick of the Fane. You don't see him as often as I think. Yeah, he's, still, he's a pretty good tool. Most people de do tend to just bring up two runesmiths. But he's got the runesmith here. And also a rune lord. Who looks like he's only actually brought one spell himself. Which is the master rune of wrath and ruin. So let's see how this goes and get underway. So in the back we do start throwing a few axes in at the giant slayers. Just trying to pick these guys off. I mean they have like no armor. And as you can see all these axes flying in. I going to do a decent amount of damage to these dwarfs. However, I was a little bit worried he was just going to block off this exit here, but it doesn't seem like my opponents actually know, notice these guys. They're a bit of a safe distance now, and they're just going to be throwing axes in, trying to get some damage done into the flank, where these guys, you know, take a little bit extra damage. Now, in the main force, I have forced myself on top of the hill now, and now I've actually managed to locate that enemy army. And this brimstone gun's doing a decent job actually against marauders, you know, these low armoured troops. They're just tearing them apart. Like, you see quite a few dead bodies here. If they need a tiny bit of ammo up, they've actually done some really serious work here. But let's fast forward just a little bit because there's obviously a lot of walking across the battlefield. Now what I should probably do in this situation is actually just sit here up on this hill, tank the damage from the gyrocopter, and force my opponent to slowly come towards me. Obviously we don't want to pour in stalemate. However, a uh, person we're up against today, I will look at his name at the end, I'm trying to remember what it was exactly, is actually a subscriber on my channel, and I didn't want like, you know, a boring kind of just stalemate match. So I thought, you know, I would march into them and try and do as much damage as possible. Great play by him as well here, dropping a Master Rune of Wrath and Ruin, slowing these guys down and then letting these Dwarves actually catch them. It looks like they're actually going to break them off the battlefield, that's a big loss for me. But if poor Micro, I should have brought them away a little bit quicker. So what you don't want to do in this situation is pretty much what I'm doing here. You don't want to charge into the Dwarves and let them have the fight they want to have. You want to use your other tools to try and stop this as much as possible. We'll get into that a bit more in the next game. For this battle, I am just trying to charge into the front line, hoping these Mortars will do enough damage to smash through, break through into this back line. As you see, I am trying to get in the flank of these hounds. The problem is, when a dwarf player does this, they come up on the edge of the map here. Here's the white line here. There's very little room you actually have to kind of maneuver around the back. And against this army, even if I do, to be honest, he only really has the bolt for it. So there's not, you know, the kind of standard thunderers or quarrels that you get in the back. So the problem is these two units of hounds and two units of ice wolves are basically obsolete. Yeah, they can do a little bit of damage, but they're not going to pay for themselves in this matchup, realistically. We drop a little boat down the line here on the long bridge, doing a decent amount of damage, and it looks like the front line has got underway. 
So you can see the side, we're desperately trying to get these walls around the flank. But they're just going to be caught by Giant Slash, which isn't actually the worst matchup for these guys. But they're fairly cheap, and they do a decent damage back to these, you know, naked little dwarfs flying around here. The way he plays with uh, Gyrocops here, though, is up to 29 kills. He's been focusing down this unit from Rollers, which is going to really help out these long bids in this engagement. Now the front line, we can see the Blaster Charge is doing a decent amount of damage on these Marauders, not quite as much as I expect actually, we'll do have one more volley. That's a decent amount of work for you know, that price him. And these, I just I don't really can't find a home for these guys at the moment, they're kind of just standing on the side, trying to weasel them through, but my opponent's doing a really good job here of protecting this bulk from the back, but it's up to 21 kills now, which is you know, no joke. So as you can see, we are struggling to kind of punch through as quickly as I'd hoped. We are winning all the front line engagements, but over here, the uh, Wolf of the Wanderer has charged in, it's getting a bit bold, I'm getting a little bit desperate. I've popped um, the debuff down on the Rune Lord, I'm trying to get in there and do some serious damage. With this heavy beam sword and that Bane as their protection, they are actually doing a bit of a number over on Wolfric himself. It's also been popped with the um, Master Rune, the Grafen Rune, slowing down a little bit. So our wizard is running around Cackland, he's been dropping spells all the game, but nothing too effective. He's been dropping you know, a few Plague of Rust on certain people. I believe we dropped that on the Lord along with... Um, Wolfric's debuff as well, just to try and snipe him out, but it doesn't look like we've actually managed to hit him. And over here on the right flank, things are going slightly better here. We are managing to hack right through these mines fast times, and it looks like these long guns pretty much are off line. Now these Marauders, they've done a decent job, they've got 13 kills, they've just been thrown active into this engagement the entire game. Really trying to help pull these Marauders through. Well, I still run Chevron, so you'd think they'd do pretty good against long bids with great weapons, but with the Gyrocopter to play so far, they've just been the most slowly muted down. We push into the back a little bit, looks like we won this main engagement here with these Marauders, and they've popped into the back line of Miners. But it looks like we haven't really managed to shut down this boat for now, it's up to 38 kills now, and all those kills count, and we just don't have enough to punch through here. We hit the first wave of Dwarfs and just stalled, I mean even where we did win, we then have to run into the second wave and all his reserves pop in. These Giant Slayers are obviously designed for anti large these Naked Dwarfs, they're running there and they're just absolutely front to the so they take some damage in return, but you know, they don't really have any other homes to go into. So it looks like the Marauders were shaken off. I think they've probably been getting shot at by the Bolt Thrower by the looks of it. And we're kind of just crumbling all across. We do a desperate last charge here of the Norskin uh, Ice Wolves. Just charge into the back of some of these Miners. Or it looks like we're trying to force our way through onto the Bolt Thrower. I mean, even if we shut it down, it's almost out of ammo. It's not really kind of a good of a target right now. And we're just going to get pinned down by Dragon Back Slayers. Hunted down by all these Miners and other units. So we do have our last little pocket of strength over here. Now, do we have Wolfric even still alive? Don't spot him anywhere. So it looks like Wolfric may have gone down. Of course, Norskins, not the best leadership. So once that goes down, everything starts to kind of crumble. Now, we do have a pocket of strength over here with the Shaman Sorcerer. But it looks like army losses are setting in. And we're starting to route off the field. And that is going to be game. So very well played to my opponent. Let's go to the end stats quickly. Yeah, so to do Devil, who does in fact have a YouTube channel as well, so I'll make sure to link that down in the description below. Really recommend checking him out, very fantastic dwarf player, and he's got loads of great replays on there. So, really fun game overall, quite tough um, having to charge into the dwarfs, you know, when they do that kind of box formation near the edge of a map. Now, the main problem with this army here is I allowed the dwarfs to fight on their terms. Okay, then he wants me to come to him and really try and force that grinding engagement where he's just going to use the runesmiths to kind of, you know, wrap and ruin me, drop all those big buffs onto the dwarfs and the fame to protect them so I couldn't even snipe them out with Wolfric, which is a very good play overall. So this can be a very frustrating uh, matchup to play against dwarfs. You know, when you see dwarfs, like, oh god, are they going to, you know, are they going to charge me or are they going to sit back? And so I thought, you know, I'd do a little, this little video just to show you one version of that battle kind of coming up there where I've charged into him. I'm going to go show you a different battle now on how to kind of take out a dwarf build like this. So let's go down to... Here it is. We've got Crushing Oak Camper. So the dwarfs have set up their little tents. And we're going to be playing the High Elves here. So a very different build. And of course we're going to go with Alethanar, who I believe is just the absolute bane of dwarfs. Okay, we're going to be up against General Disarray here. He's gone for a slightly different build than we've just seen, but he goes for a fairly similar tactic. So, of course, the dwarfs are going to be hiding up here. But let's go through our army quickly. So, our front line, we have gone for the white lines of chase. I think we've gone for five units in total. These guys are great against dwarfs. They're not too expensive. They're armor piercing, however. They also have a little bit of range protection with their lion cloaks. So, great troop overall to take down dwarfs. Now, in the back, we've gone for two units of Swordsmasters of Hoef. These guys are for that extra added punch to really break through the line and take down those elite, you know, hammerers and ironbreakers. The white lions might struggle against a little bit. 
up in the sky. But for a bit of a weird pick, I wouldn't normally recommend this against dwarves. But I was kind of on a dragon buzz in the recent weeks. So we have one just for a very cheap sun dragon, for just to add a bit of mobility. And for those nice breath attacks, you know, dwarves tend to bunch up quite a lot. Now over in the sides here, we do have some Illyrian Reavers, just for the backline harass, trying to hop on those squishy targets in the back. And another unit on the left here. Now we have gone for a Mage of Shadows here. And let's see what spells we've gone for. So we have, in fact, gone for the Wyvern. Obviously, minus 30 armor is always quite nice against Dwarfs. The Pendulum, which is also decent against Dwarfs, just because they bunch up quite a lot. And the Enfeebling Foe and Melkoff's Mystifying Miasma. It seems like a strange one, but in my mind, I was thinking he's gone Clan Anger and he might bring some of the Ethereal units. I was hoping that would be able to do some damage to them, even though I think it is actually designed for units. And we have got Alephan Nahi, who's taking some cannonballs to the face here, getting flown all around. But he's going to be great at kind of sniping out the enemy lords and so forth. So for the front line, my opponent has gone for Dwarf Warriors with great weapons, mixed in with some very elite hammers. I quite like the pick of hammers here. There's, you know, they take a lot of people by surprise. A lot of Dwarf players tend to go for that onion build with cheap units of Warriors and Thunderers. On the flanks, he's also gone for some Dwarf Warriors, and he's obviously gone for the onion build as well, with more Dwarf Warriors in the back. On the flanks, just Dwarf Warriors in the very, very far back. Miners just protecting this cannon. Also accompanying the Dragonback Slayers here. It's also gone for three units of Iron Drakes, which is a very odd pick in this matchup I think. I mean they're anti-large. I suppose if I brought lots of cav actually they do quite a lot of damage and cav can be a big problem for dwarves to face. Now he's gone for a runesmith in the back here. Looks like he's just gone for wrath and ruin. Let's have a little look. Yeah ruin of wrath and ruin and the hammer of Kar Karakdraz. Oh, I'm probably saying that terribly wrong but a nice little debuff there and he has gone for the rune lord as well with master wrath, uh, uh, rune of wrath and ruin. So let's see how we play this a little bit differently. So instead of just charging headlong in, I do start moving up originally. Then I realise, you know, he's got this very defensive formation. As you can see, I can't really get behind the line of maps right here and here. So there's no real way of flanking around with any of the cav. So I'm just going to pull all my forces back here. All the white lines are falling back out of cannon range. And we're just leaving Alephanar up there. As you can see, he has dropped his Moonbow down on these hammers, doing a great bit of damage here. And he's just going to start sniping out this Rune Lord. And there's nothing really the Dwarves can do in return here, unless they, um, you know, they're going to abandon their defensive position and actually push forward towards me. So he's trying to roll up the cannon, but for us, a cannon front of Alephnar just really isn't very effective. Alephnar is just on foot here. He's surrounded by a few of his dead flows here, but he's a super small target, really hard for the cannons to hit. They're not going to be very accurate against him. Even when they do hit him, they do a decent amount of damage, but not as much damage as he's going to be doing to this rune lord. If you look, I'm just tearing him apart. This could have been invaluable, you know, again, in that first battle. It looks like the Moon Dragon's just flying around at the moment, or Sun Dragon, sorry. It is going to be flanking up and around. I've just left the Illyrian Reavers over here. Just let my opponent know he can't really you know, readjust and let his guard down on this side. Now, this is a very slow way of playing it, but if I just march headlong towards the Dwarfs and take this fight early on, I'm just going to get picked apart by the cannon, all these different runes dropping down, and it's going to be an absolute slog, much like the last game, and it's just not going to be very effective at all. So, moment, we're just sitting back quite comfortably. Alphanar, the bane of the Dowie here, just, well, he didn't even really have to dodge those cannonballs too much, just stood there firing those shots. And my opponent does see this, he spies what's happening. He does try and run away with the Rune Lord, however, I'm getting those shots in the back now. And Alphanar just has a crazy amount of range. He's going to be kind of, you know, retreating all the way into the far corner, also bringing back this Runesmith here, just trying to escape and get a bit of distance. So let's fast forward now as we do do a little bit of repositioning, and it looks like we are in fact moving up our mage. So the mage is going to be moving up as well and just dropping a fat pendulum there, went a little bit faster for it. Doing a decent amount of damage to these hammers, wasn't the perfect swing there, didn't catch this second unit. But just getting that free value, I just don't need to take the engagement yet, we've got plenty of time, there's no need just to rush in. Alephanar did pop up a little bit close, just trying to finish off this Rune Lord, but instead he's now going to be looping around the corner here. Looks like the Sun Dragon has also gone around on the right hand flank, just trying to spy out any damage, you know, do any little decent hits he can do. So as you see the Rune Lord is almost broken on the left flank there, or, or in a very far distance. So I'm going to be moving Alephanar just up and around, get ready, ready to pin him off and finish him off. And once he's dead, it's a much more comfortable fight, pushing in there nice and quickly. Looks like we are coming back with the Mage of Shadows here for another Pendulum. Let's see how this one goes down. So huge damage actually to those hammers, and helps you do even more damage to these ones. And these two very elite expensive units, just taking an absolute slog in right now, just from two Pendulums and one Moonbow shot. And the cannon shots are coming on the Swordmasters now, but we have decided to push up as, let's see, Rune Lord so close to breaking, 363 health, and where's Alephanar? He is starting to fire back on the shots, you can't hide from him, he's just such a good sniper, and with that one more shot, it looks like we are going to break the Rune Lord, and this is the one downside, you know, to kind of 
chilling out right near the border edge. As soon as your units break, they are gone. They're just going to be running. He's not going to be coming back. This obviously makes it much more comfortable for my force. Now I'm going to push forward. Power balance goes a lot, you know, heavy chunk in my favour there from that Lord going down. And we are going to be moving up with the Sun Dragon, trying to get some nice beefy breath attacks down on this front line. As you can see, unlike last one, we've managed to stop on the front line before we've got there, which is going to allow us to break through far quicker, and we've already taken out their enemy leadership. There's a much better way of playing the kind of, you know, against these tight, defensive dwarf units. So we have got another pendulum coming down with the camera, doing even more damage. That one must have been a uh, leveled up once it was quite a chunk there. The nice flame attack, doing a decent amount of damage to these dwarf warriors, and doing even more damage to these hammers, which now down to both about half the health to make these white lines easily crumble all over them. Alec Nart has just switched his pugs to the Runesmith now, doing some very decent damage, trying to take out that Dwarf leadership. The front line has finally started trying to get engaged there. The Dwarf drop and enfeebling foe down on these hammers, so really good engagement now for the White Lion to pick up for them super quickly. Especially if the Swordmasters are running, they have had a really rapid run, but they've been taking a little bit of damage at least. In the back, we're just trying to pick off with our extra mobility, a few kind of straggling units. We found some miners in the back, so we're just going to try and break them and force them off the field here. My opponent is going to retaliate with these Iron Drakes. It looks like we have managed to get in the back as well with some Moon Reaver, just popping on these miners. Actually, a little bit scared though, there are the Dragonback Slayers running around in the background. You see, the front line has been completely shattered there super quickly due to all the kind of you know, magic effects we've been up to. And these White Lines are just going to pop on top of this Runesmith. And when he goes down, the entire Dwarven leadership is going to be crushed. The Swordmasters are helping take out the hammers on this side. And we have run to the back line and popped on top of this cannon here, which is very good for us. The dragon, he got in there, it did what it needed to do, and it's going to be flying away. But a nice, huge volley there for my opponent. Getting all these Iron Drake tall, um, tall hammer torpedoes there. And he was absolutely hammering that dragon there. But it's done its work, you know, it's been quite a nice attraction. Got all these um, tall hammer torpedoes away from the main fight. And, you know, he's actually fairly cheap for a dragon. You'll see all across the front line, on the right flank and the centre, we've completely shattered through. Left flank, we've been held up a little bit, but we're still getting good trades here. And it looks like we are going to be coming back for the rear charge from these white lines, using that extra mobility of the elves here, really to start picking apart these dwarfs and isolating units, which is just what you want to do. These guys are charging the back, and these dwarfs are always not the longest in the world. Then the main fight, it's literally just been running run in battle of the dwarfs, trying to retreat, and the elves coming crushing in. It looks like we're about to break off these dwarf warriors. And so close to the edge, they're just not going to be coming back. Swordmasters have taken an absolute beating from you know, these Troll Hammer Torpedoes and all the different rooms been going down all game. But they've still really paid themselves 54 kills and they're just rushing through this line. Even Alpha and Isle's getting in there and doing a decent amount of damage to these Iron Drakes. And it looks like for overall things are going much, much better. Another big breath attack from the Dragon, who's got actually 43 kills, which isn't bad considering you know, there's been all these Troll Hammer Torpedoes trying to fend him off all battle. And I believe this is going to be game. The left flank has completely shattered now, so we're going to have an extra two units of white lines coming running in. Looks like the mage is even trying to get involved a little bit. We are on top of these troll hammer torpedoes now with the dragon and the sword master. So these guys are not going to be having a fun day. There's a little bastion of strength over here for the dragon back place, of course, unbreakable. They're doing a decent amount of damage now to Alephanar, but with all these white lines coming in, it's not going to be doing enough. Even if they bring Alephanar down now, I can't see any way really back from the dwarfs. My opponent with that does surrender. So very well played to my opponent there. Nice close victory. Let's go to the end stats. So as you can see, that went much better for me. Uh, well played to General Disarray though. Um, I still, you know, I really like the pick of the hammerers. I just managed to pick them apart from afar. And this is kind of my anti-dwarf build. The unfortunate I can always throw them up against here. And still very well played. I really like the Iron Drake. Um, Chorhammer torpedoes and I seeing them used. So I hope to meet you again on ladder some point soon. Um, but overall, this list is just much better at taking down dwarfs when they're trying to do this type of style. Obviously, the Norse gun list before would have been fairly decent coming up against you know, your traditional dwarfs where they're trying to push towards you, just because the marauders have been able to wrap around quite quickly and break through that front line. And also with all the pounds and whatnot, you know, hopping on top of targets, pressuring from all angles, was also what you want to do against you know, armies like Skaven. But it's much tougher, you know, when there's no real way of kind of getting around behind the enemy. So obviously these Elaine Reavers, they were always going to struggle in this matchup. But the idea is just don't panic. Don't allow, you know, yourself to be drawn into the dwarfs, okay? You don't need to kind of run headlong into the dwarfs and just get shot to pieces. Instead, use you know, your tools like Aleph and Nar, who just snipes out their lord, then starts picking off this runesmith, you know, really putting that added pressure on, wasting that ammo of that cannon. 
and also you know the dragon and the mage coming in doing some massive damage to the hammers softening them up so when i do eventually commit my forces we can punch through super quick get on top of the cannon get on top of the iron drakes and it's game over basically so I hope this has helped you guys if you are struggling, you know, coming up against this type of dwarf build. If you did like, please do leave a like down below. Feel free to comment and subscribe. Getting so close now to 50, I think we're on 43 subscribers, so it's really nice to try and grow. 50 is the current target, you know, to get to. Uh, this is probably my last video for a couple of days I'm at work, so the next video is probably going to be up Tuesday, I would assume. Monday, maybe. So Monday or Tuesday. Um, I do have a Patreon down below as well, you know, standard stuff. And we do have a tournament coming up. Probably not this Wednesday, but next Wednesday. It's going to be the second death for Dishonor. It's really exciting. The last one got over 100 views. So I need to message some of the competitors from uh, that last event. And if any of you guys want to you know, take part, just message me down below and we'll try and get you into the game. So peace, peace, guys. Stay awesome. See you next time.